I'd like to insert one more aspect of this uh, discussion, which has, I don't think, been mentioned explicitly, and that is that there is an, a very important class aspect to all of this. Both of you mentioned in your talk the, the word bourgeois, but I think the woke ideology is, is in essence, a very bourgeois ideology. It completely ignores the, 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 the class differences. And uh, an author like Mary Harrington writes in her, uh, argues in Feminism in, Against Progress, her, her latest book, that upper middle class women greatly benefit from this type of contemporary feminism, but that the burdens of this, the side effects, the negative sides, fall almost exclusively on the lower class. Like if you are a low class female, and you happen to land in prison, and you're incarcerated with a serial rapist, it's not so much a burden if you belong to the upper class, but if you're on the lower class, you, you, you have to deal with this. And it's not only uh, uh, this aspect, but it's across the whole scope of wokeness, this total ignorance of class difference. Could you maybe comment on that? I discovered this uh, in a very personal way. I, I was... I spend a lot of time in Italy. We have a little house in Lombardy, uh, near Menaggio, and uh, living in, in a little village called Codonia. And very often you kind of sit down and you meet with people there. Uh, some of them like me because I'm an ill professori. You know, they, get, they don't realize that being a professor these days means nothing. You know, every idiot you know, that I know is a professor in, <laughs> in England. Uh, but nevertheless, you get impressed. So you talk to people. And I remember there was a, an election coming up. And uh, so I'm talking to the people in the restaurants. I'm talking to the people in the bars. You know, everybody is for the Lega. It was really, I mean, all the ordinary people were saying Salvini, you know, sort of blah, 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 blah. I go to a party, it's a dinner party. Uh, and in the dinner party, there are all the, uh, the wealthy people, the lawyers and the doctors and... You know, you know, the big people in the area. And I'm just, I just made a, a, a little remark about the European, European Union. I put my foot in it, and I told them that, you know, in England, my family is for Brexit. We were, I'm, I shouldn't be saying this here, but we were very happy with Brexit. Anyway, so this, this guy comes over to me and says, Frank, don't be quiet. Because these are all payday people. You know, you know, every single one of them vote for the left in, the, in that country. And it really brought it home to me because all the, uh, the middle class and the upper middle class people, the, you know, the sophisticated people, they were on this side of the divide and all the ordinary people were on that side of the divide. And that experience was very interesting for me because then I said, well, actually, where I live in England is the same thing. I live in a, a town called Faversham and complete class divide on who votes for what. I mean, the Brexit phenomenon was a working class phenomenon. They were the ones that were, were for Brexit. It's the same thing, I mean, I'm Hungarian. In Hungary, there's a big difference between Budapest, the capital city, and everywhere else. But even in Budapest, obviously, you know, there, there's a big kind of divide. And you realize, and this gives me hope, because it basically tells me that you know, ordinary working class people are able to vote for people like us and are able to get attracted to our kinds of ideas because they know that they pay the price for the way that the elites in their society behaves. They are the ones that pay the price for bad schools. They are the people that pay the price for multiculturalism. They are the ones that pay the price for the fact that uh, the, the elites have got their, their kind of globalist focus on the world outside of the country. So yes, I think that the class dimension is really, really important. And it's all, almost been inverted from what it was in the past. And I think that's a good thing because there are more ordinary working people than there are lawyers and doctors and uh, you know, millionaires. <laughs>